order now this public hearing of the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation and Futures Thinking. Uh, we, we will continue to discuss today Senate Resolution Number 536, which, which I filed together with our Majority Floor Leader, Joel Villanueva. And uh, the resolution's title is a resolution urging the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation, Future Thinking to conduct an entry in aid of legislation on the status of human resource for health in the Philippines. The reason the committee is hearing this is because there are overlapping concerns and overlapping agencies, overlapping sectors that are affected uh, by all of this. There is SDG number three. The, the two main would be SDG number three on good health and well-being and SDG eight on decent work and economic growth. But offhand, um, SDG uh, 11 on sustainable cities and communities is very much affected. How can your community be sustainable if there is no access to uh, health workers, diba? So, dun pa lang sa tatlong yon, uh, covered na yan. And of course, me be with the advocacy I've had uh, since I became a senator, um, gender equality is also affected because you know very well uh, from the time of pregnancy pa lang to birth, affected na ang life ng nanay if she doesn't have decent um, maternity care. Maternity care, And then even the life of her newborn infant or her, not even the, even the unborn is already affected without the proper prenatal checkup. So, um, marami talagang issues ang overlapping dito and that is why uh, we want to make sure that we cover all. Um, they're all interrelated. So, I will not repeat what has already been established and discussed in the previous hearing. Uh, we still had uh, resource persons available virtually na hindi na natin natawag. So, that is why we will prioritize them because they were already present last Time. And then uh, we will have other resource persons. I will just call an acknowledgement as um, I call their name later on. Um, my request always uh, is wag niyo na akong basahan ng position paper niyo because I can use my time better wisely uh, if I read it later on on my own personal time. What, what I would like you to do is highlight whatever it is in your position paper uh, that you want to draw my attention to and for the record. Pero yung mahabang mga position paper, uh, trust that we will go through it, we will read it, because after this, we will either have another hearing or a TWG or small group meetings because uh, our objective is really to find solutions that we can recommend to the executive. So um, other than that, um, I believe in a health and mobility break. So anyone is welcome to stand up, to move around. Uh, that is welcome anytime. As long as hindi kayo yung nagsasalita, I, I will not say why are you standing up. Uh, that is welcome. Uh, we are also trying to be sustainable, so no pet bottles. Uh, please ask the page na lang if you want more water uh, and whatever. So, um, on that note, on WebEx, please mute your mic unless you are called. Okay. And there is also a raise hand function that you can use. Um, all right. So, we will be able to start now. And our first resource person, the first resource person for today is Dr. Tony Dance. Uh, has been a regular resource person for many years in uh, health hearings, in syntax hearings, uh, and not also new to sustainable development. Our Suge, who we are on borrowed time because I understand he has clinic today now as we speak, um, but uh, I promise that he will be the first. And uh, I'm giving you the floor now, Tony. And then, um, although I tend to save my questions for later, um, because you're only joining us for a short while, if you have questions, comments, I will entertain them or I will make my comments right away. And after Dr. Tony Dance, uh, Dr. Marilyn Lorenzo. So, Dr. Tony, you have the floor. Thank you, Senator Pia. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to start. Uh, I'll, I prepared a five-minute presentation because I was told that how much we had. Um, I'm going to start with a shout out for all our health, for all our frontline workers. Okay? Uh, what makes us, I think, unique in the world is a singular trait, which is our ability to care for others. That's why. Uh, if you look at workforce, we export teachers, nannies, entertainers, doctors, nurses, midwives. If it involves taking care of someone, no other better person than a Filipino. But this has been a boon 
and a bane for us, no? a, a blessing and a curse. Because while it increases, you know, international appreciation of Filipinos around the world, it also depletes us of important resources to take care of our local citizens. I'll take off from where uh, you said Kronkilio ended in the last meeting, uh, talking about how WHO proposed to manage this uh, boon and bane for Filipinos. Uh, when they revised the health workforce requirements in 2016 to attain universal, universal health coverage and uh, sustainable development goals. So they reset it to uh, here 4.45 healthcare workers per thousand population. I brought it back to the units used by WHO, which is per 1,000, because that's the unit that healthcare workers use. It's, it's our denomination. We understand if it's one worker per 1,000, we can always ask ourselves, kaya ba namin to, to take care of 1,000 people in a year? So the recommendation was four healthcare workers, professionals, one to two doctors, two to three nurses, and... Uh, one uh, midwife. Uh, now, uh, in uh, this is borrowed from the slide of Yusek uh, Ronquillo. He correlated this with the practicing. Uh, maganda yun kasi hindi licensed, no? And showed that we are far from 4.45. We're only 2.5 healthcare workers per Filipino. And that adds up to a deficit of 116,000 doctors, 125 nurses, 125,000 nurses. Uh, we do have adequate midwives according to the data he presented. Uh, and the solutions discussed were training and recruitment. I'd like to focus on two, which I will call retention and redesigning uh, the workforce. So some how do we retain the healthcare workforce, which is the problem that's hardest to solve, because uh, we cannot fill up a jar with a leak by adding more water. We need to seal that leak. And it, I've divided proposed strategies into internal and external. So some of the internet, internal legislative solutions that ought to be discussed are revision of the PS cap for healthcare workers. Uh, because this ties the hands of the LGUs. Uh, protection of the Magna Carta benefits for public healthcare workers, because this is always the first to be sacrificed based on availability of money. Expansion of Magna Carta benefits to the private healthcare workforce, including uh, job security and uh, benefits, other benefits. Uh, this is a personal advocacy for me, converting mandatory retirement to voluntary retirement. As you know, Senator Pia, I retired last September at an age where I feel that I could still be very productive. Uh, the mandatory retirement of 65 was set in the 1970s when average longevity was 65 years old. It's now a little more than 70 for men and women and higher for women than men. So it really needs to be adjusted. Longevity for me at my age, so that's longevity at birth. For me at my age, long, uh, average life expectancy is until 85. So I mean, many more years uh, to support an uh, efficient healthcare workforce. Uh, Let me just give a very quick, uh, excuse hmm. me, Dr. Yes. Tony. Just a yes. very quick uh, response um, on the uh, no, on the voluntary uh, retirement or or changing at least re uh, revisiting no, the mandatory retirement. Ever since we discussed this now with you as an example, we draft bill na kami ng staff ko and uh, we have already given it to various agencies for review. So binulungan ako ni Attorney Mikey now. Now we've received their comments and. Uh, We'll be reviewing it because I yeah. feel like it's a low, low hanging fruit, no? Na, mm. na we should be able to do immediately. Thank yeah. you. We don't, we don't like a mass strike like what's happening in France uh, by raising retirement age. What we we can raise is the age for mandatory retirement so that it becomes voluntary. Uh, now. 
just a comment on return of service, uh, whether it's three or five years. It shifts the migration rate to the right, but doesn't shift it down. So we still have the same rate of loss, but we're three years uh, behind. So I think uh, it's a band-aid solution for a gunshot wound, which brings me to the next set of strategies, uh, external strategies, so controlling the uh, workforce milieu around the world. So the WHO Global Code of Practice on International Recruitment of Health Personnel, I've shared with the staff of Senator Pia, but there is a provision there where this ought to become legislation and may, if I may add personally, should become an international treaty rather than an optional code. Uh, the turn of service is only one provision there. Other provisions that need to be supported by recipient countries for, such as US and Canada, for source countries such as India and the Philippines, are funds for training. So they need to return the training funds we use to train the healthcare workforce there. Uh, pirating, and even uh, funds for retention, so for salaries for people so they can stay in our workforce, and supporting concepts such as circular migration, where it's the opposite of return of service, where the return of service comes after a, a tour of duty in another country, uh, where they will benefit not just financially, but also training-wise. Uh, in terms of redesign, um, I have three suggestions. Adjusting quantity, uh, the WHO target of 4.45, I think, will aggravate brain drain in lower to middle income countries. So they're telling these countries that you need more than what you've already recruited. And that's going to aggravate our situation because they're going to get it from us. Uh, my suggestion is that we set appropriate density targets using local forecasts based on local needs. No? Uh, so 4.45 is an international mean, but countries have different needs and different systems and should estimate their own, uh, have their own forecast for healthcare workforce density. Now, this is what's required. We need accurate and timely tracking uh, uh, I think you said, uh, Ronquillo pointed out limitations of our current data sources. They are late and they suffer from inaccuracy. But through our health information system, which we should include a human resource database, and perhaps through the national ID system, uh, we may be able to track uh, volume and movement of our healthcare workers. Then uh, another is to broaden services, uh, specifically, and we've discussed it before, Senator, the uh, professionalization of PHWs. We've undertaken this for the past six years in some barangays uh, in a rural and remote area, where our training goal is to turn PHWs into professional mothers or parents of the community. Because in truth, Parents are primary care. When, when a person gets sick, uh, most of the time, the first person you'll ask is your mother or father. So uh, I'll show how this might be done uh, in a while. This will entail standardizing their training, their qualifications, salaries, and benefits. Because they do a lot without training, without a target qualifications, without fixed salaries and benefits. Uh, also, another way to broaden provision of services is through telemedicine. We've tried this in a rural and remote area, especially during the pandemic. Uh, and last but also more, very important, improving quality. Is the, the grace, this is the great unrecognized inequity. We all recognize inequity in workforce, in funds, in facilities, but we don't recognize inequity in access to health information. So what we've tried in our uh, rural remote experiment is to provide decision support system for our patients, doctors, nurses, midwives, and even, even our barangay health workers. So there are decision support systems for professionals as well as non-professionals like the BHWs. Uh, this will help them become professional parents of the community 
and uh, enrich the trust of the community in this community health workers. Now, the common route to end of all this, whether you're talking of tracking, providing telemedicine or decision support system for workers, the, the root problem is information technology, which is the hardware, the software, and the networks, uh, not just for the providers, but for the, for the users, the, the patients themselves. So we really welcome the executive order signed by President Duterte, liberalizing Satellite, satellite access, which will enable these uh, three uh, possibilities to take place so that we can redesign uh, the human resource system and uh, work, think outside the box of 4.45, because I really think that's an impossible goal for our country. So thank you for the opportunity to present that third year. Yeah, just uh, one, one other feedback on the presentation regarding uh, professionalizing the PHWs. No? If you have a quick response to this, or maybe later on the LAMDH, um, there is actually a test the course pala on uh, PH, PHW training. So I'm just wondering if this training is aligned with what you had in mind. Uh, Dr. Tony, or if you've had the chance to see it, and then maybe in the TWG you can all come together and give your thoughts on it. Because sayang naman, that's the resources that yes. test is around. So I think that that's the that's the easiest ano rin, uh, track yes. to follow, di ba, na i-maintain na all of them, uh, if, they, if they want to receive that professional, that that official status, di ba, as a professional BHW. Yes. Uh, kasi isang katutak na rin naman ng certification ng mga yan, and that I know, di ba? Lahat nagpapacertify for whatever training. So just, as you said, professionalizing. Yeah. So I think Senator Pia training is good, but but it's supply, uh, and we need to solve the drain, uh, seal that hole. Uh, we also need to uh, specify qualification. Uh, we need to offer regularize them and offer salaries. Some of them are receiving 500 pesos a month and are just, I'm wondering, still so happy to render service. Uh, and their benefits are all at the discretion of the mayor. Uh, and this needs to be standardized, which is part of professionalism. I think training is a big step, but there are many other things to be done to professionalize uh, BHWs. I, I agree, and I think I'm asking my staff to check. I I recall that that's actually one of the advocacy and bills of my brother, Senator Alan. Uh, yeah. the, the standard sal salary for the PHW is regular employment status of PHW. Yeah. So, sama -sama I, yun, diba? if you meet the standard, you, you undergo the hours of training, uh, then you should be professionalized and adequately compensated. But I think, I think if I may add, and uh, uh, I'll leave it to the experts to hash this out in a TWG, um, how will the PHWs now in their professional capacity na nga, work with the other health professionals in terms of providing for for all the health needs of the community, di ba? Yun naman yung goal natin, eh, right? So, mm -hmm. yes. dun sa 4.5 na yan, 4.45, which sabi mo nga is may not be so, may not be the most accurate way of uh, of uh, quantifying our needs. I think yes. the PhD should be part of that equation, right? I mean, that's a system yes. that we already have in place and uh, just really needs to be brought to that level of uh, no, of um, of being accounted for your service and the big Yes, Senator, there were last year we reviewed seven bills in Congress on professionalization of the BHWs, but none none of them were ever heard on the floor. I think some of the bills have been there uh, for the past uh, four or five years. So they we haven't really had, I think, uh, serious movement in terms of them becoming law. So maybe the, uh, yeah, your your group on uh, for, uh, futures thinking might be able to push them forward. Uh, in terms of personal 
experience we've tried uh, we have sessions with BHWs around 200 of them every two weeks uh, from Bulusan, Sorsogon and Samal Bataan and, and they really appreciate uh, the training uh, and some uh, the decision support system we've taught them how to use it and it's given to them for free uh, it really empowers them to render the care so yung iba nga sa kanila naiiyak dahil natutuwa sila na they are being empowered. So, so this is something I think the BHW community and, and the community of uh, patients under them will truly appreciate. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tony. Um, Dr. Tony, I was just telling my staff, see Dr. Vivian in my team now, who also does a lot of this uh, as we speak. They are in, where now? Cebu. They're in Cebu. Uh, although yung focus ng team ko is... Um, maternal health uh, and uh, infant health, no? but um, baka itong decision support system uh, nyo, ma masama nyo na rin siya dyan para ma-include na rin niya in the training, di ba? Yes. Sige. Kasama siya, kasama siya. Meron dyan on maternal and child health. No, I mean, I mean, masang, Dr. B, can, if she can access oh, your... Yeah. Yeah. decision support system so that when she does her own uh, outreach on my behalf, uh, she oh, okay. This. For over the years, the focus namin has really been maternal health no? and infant so, or ch 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 children's uh, health. Yeah. So, sige, um, thank you We're, so much, Dr. Tony. I know you have clinics. Um, thank you, I'll thank you. On a number of matters, and we'll invite you again for the next step. Thank you so much. You're, thank you're, you for the opportunity. Thank you. Your input is always very, um, very on point. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, next, as I mentioned, uh, Dr. Marilyn Lorenzo is um, online. Um, she is a professor of UP Manila. And um, after Dr. Lorenzo, we will have uh, PMA and FNU and PHA. From my recollection, sila yung nakaabang na sa atin last week. So thank you for your patience. I will prioritize all of you today. Uh, go ahead, Dr. Lorenzo. Good afternoon, Senator Pia and uh, your committee on uh, SDG Innovations and Futures. Um, as requested, um, I prepared a short briefer uh, on uh, specifically on um, the uh, Special Health Fund. Um, so this is short, but to give uh, some uh, background, um, Please. Next, please. Um, the, the, well, the background of this is we are um, we remain as one of the poorest performing uh, countries in the region for health. Uh, this is a slide borrowed from um, uh, Dr. Berhere in uh, one of our last meetings. So if you look at um, at these statistics, um, life expectancy of Filipinos, um, it's always going to be poor to be uh, a Filipino, uh, I mean, relative to our neighbors, because um, the average Filipino will only live to be 71.4 years. The rest are living longer than us, uh, even if Indonesia is only slightly uh, older. This is significant because life expectancy, as we all know, um, gives us the sum total of the quality of care um, that uh, a, that citizens of a nation enjoy. And, and this is uh, validated by all the other statistics. If you look at maternal mortality rate, ours is the highest. Many more mothers die in the Philippines than in other ASEAN countries. Uh, infant mortality rate is the same. Uh, and if you look at out-of-pocket expenditures, uh, ours is also the highest at 48.6% um, of income um, of Filipino families. Um, so... Next, please. Uh, so if we, we look at this, uh, we, we ask ourselves why. No? And of course, one of the reasons for the poor performance of our healthcare system is because of um, health workers' inability to uh, do what they need to do. So next, please. Um, uh, health workers, especially at the primary healthcare levels, need immediate support. Um, and... and 
um, what kind of support do they need at this point? Um, the first one is decent work and positive practice environments. In a recent uh, UP College of Nursing uh, meeting, uh, several studies that were done uh, by our group and others uh, pointed out that there were three main reasons for um, um, non-retention of nurses, and it's not all about money. The first one is about um, work environments, uh, whether their jobs uh, provide decent work, uh, and if they have uh, prospects of uh, career uh, development and progression. Uh, the second is uh, the work environment giving them um, the requisite uh, materials, support, and technology that they need. And only third comes um, uh, pay, uh, salaries, and benefits uh, bundled together. Um, so it's very important to provide uh, investments for this. Uh, also, direct investments um, in, in healthcare facilities are needed to create positions for them. And when we talk about positions, we're not talking about JOs or job orders. Um, materials and equipment to enable them to work well. Um, it's well known in the nursing world that uh, we are a technology-challenged uh, nation in terms of uh, exposing uh, health workers, and especially nurses, to uh, the materials and equipment they need. And uh, there has to be more investments uh, uh, given to cutting-edge training to enable them to function well in primary care sites, um, espousing PHC. There are more training available in hospitals, but for primary care, um, this is far. These are far and uh, these are few and far between. No? So, so we want to emphasize that there will be no UHC if there are no health workers um, that will be retained, recruited, and retained. Next, please. So what may give um, oh um, this immediate investment? Well, DOH, uh, Dr. Burheri also shared with us the new strategic thrusts, thrusts of uh, DOH as far as UHC is concerned. And one of these is uh, enabling people to be healthy, protecting them from health risks, caring for health and wellness, and strengthen health institutions and the workforce. And we'd like to focus on the strengthening health institutions and workforce. Thanks, please. Um, their thesis is uh, with strengthening the workforce, there will be a healthier um, country you know, and healthier Filipinos. So um, the government right now is pushing to strengthen institutions and workforce in the short term. Um, they're setting up action centers for healthcare workers and fast lanes in hospitals to fast track benefit provision. And um, I, I, uh, I, um, emboldened uh, the, the move to train 300 public health experts in the next five years abroad, uh, which I hope they will rethink. Um, and setting up action centers also for hospitals, I hope can also be rethought to actually set up action centers more for primary care. In the long term, um, they're thinking of creating mandatory service programs for students and graduates of health courses, the, uh, the return service agreement that uh, Dr. Tony also discussed, um, which I support. Uh, and our experiment at UP Manila uh, bears out bears this out. No, um, There are a lot of LGUs that have expressed satisfaction in at least getting, um, you know, good, very well-trained health workers, uh, even for two years alone. Uh, entering into treaties with other countries to invest in healthcare worker education long-term is also something to support. But this has already been done in the work that we did with mutual um, agreements. Um, the problem is uh, we the implementation of this is uh, very poor. Uh, we have no um, instruments to compel those that re um, that recruit um, health workers, and especially nurses from our shores, uh, to uh, implement their commitments. So, um, so next, please. So then, now comes uh, the the health. Uh, so the special health fund. Next, please. Next, please. Um, the special health funds. Um, so we've said that in the, the investments in uh, primary health care uh, workforce are needed immediately, you know, as in really now. So next, please. So when you look at uh, what level of investments are we talking about you know, and how underinvested are we? You will see uh, comparison countries um, and regions. 
in the Philippines, in primary care, um, we only uh, invest 4% of our GNP. But in the EU and the US, of course, first world countries, the figures are 13% and 5.7% respectively. Um, and for and um, for the Philippines vis-a-vis -vis ASEAN countries, we invest six dollars uh, per capita, um, and uh, twenty and other countries, uh, including that of uh, Vietnam and uh, Malaysia and Indonesia, uh, have an average of about twenty dollars invested in primary care. So their primary care systems, um, and and most of these are expenditures in in health workers. Next please. So um, we can actually do this. Question lang, no? Can you go yes, back to that slide? Yeah. And um, it's unfortunate na wala na si Dr. Doc, Tony Dance, but we can just inform him of my comment. Dito sa last slide nyo, I'm a little bit, um, I, I have some concerns kasi we are somewhat of a model in terms of the laws that we have passed uh, on sin tax, no? uh, which uh, directly contributes to health infrastructure, equipment, and uh, medical assistance. It's not a small yes. amount. I'm just curious that despite that, uh, ganun pa rin tayo kababa sa neighboring countries kasi I know that we're called out for that good for those good laws. So I feel so disappointed that despite that, so saan na pupunta yun? I mean, I get it na wala namang, wala namang specific doon na primary health yata. I think it, well, it refers to universal health. And universal health is basically primary health. So I'm surprised. And I, I, I'd i like to, I, I don't know, like what what's the basis to consider primary care? And on that note, on the positive side, um, in my other hearing, uh, the other day on, what was my hearing, STG, what was the topic? Uh, the, we had a hearing on the baselines and where we are with the sustainable development goals, uh, mm -hmm. the tracking. Uh, it was emphasized there that because of the latest syntax law, uh, wherein I personally uh, included the amendment that uh, a certain portion of the collection will go to uh, SDGs. And a big component nga is that it's health pa rin naman. So that's the good news. Madadagdagan pa. But yun nga ma'am, ano kayang, ano bang coverage nun na matrack ko? Yeah. Sa Yun, yun ang problema kasi, uh, Senator Pia, if you analyze the, our national health accounts, most of the uh, increased expenditures in healthcare now go to hospitals. Um, and also, uh, well, sad to say this, but I think Tony will agree, to doctors, uh, many of them, especially to the private docs, very little of this uh, increased expenditure amounts go to primary care. When we talk about primary care, we're talking about of course, the barangay health uh, units, uh, the uh, municipal and city health uh, centers, and the prime and level one hospitals. Hanggang dun sana kasi yun yung referral hospital. But, but unfortunately, uh, you will see, even if you look at our landscape, uh, health system landscape right now, level two and level three hospitals are very well developed. But we all know that um, these are not what our people need no, on a daily basis. So, um, yung, yung... Let me, let, I understand what you're saying. Um, let me show you from the perspective of the lawmakers who are the ones who make that, well, not necessarily the final decision kasi nga kung ganun ka general yung provisions namin na it doesn't go specifically to primary health to na pupunta. But I'll tell you why. Yung lumalapit kasi sa amin, ang pangangailangan nila is heart surgery, uh, uh, lang ganito, yung malalalim. So, in the minds of an ordinary lawmaker, uh, yun yung, yun, ah, wala, ah, tapos lalapitan ng mayor or ng, ng provincial uh, governor or ng, ng uh, anong tawag dito, administrator ng hospital, sasabihin na wala kaming ganito, wala kaming ganito. And so, I think um, it's like it's like that proverbial uh, uh, example that we have that the blind, the six blind men and the elephant. I, kayong mga health primary healthcare advocates and I'd like to include myself there nandun tayo sa tail tapos yung pinapakitang image sa iba nandun sa truck so ibang iba talaga so I'm very happy that you pointed this out because I, I do have 
the power to to dig deeper and even maybe in uh, the budget we can specify and in the next hearing or or TWG I want my team to zone in on this so that we can really make himai where does it go and what can we do about it um because I understand now what you're saying um but uh Offhand, no, and I'll see if my team can pull it up within the time of our hearing. Uh, that there's an allocated budget for primary health care facilities. Ang laki din nun, that's in the billions. So, hindi naman sa hindi nalalaan. Do you have that offhand? Can you get it? That's huge. Um, mm. I don't know offhand. I do not know in comparison to what we put in for... Um, for uh, level 3 hospitals or even level 2. Pero... I'm surmising bigger pa rin naman yung nalalagay natin sa primary health. So at least the the the, the objective is there. Let's just do the numbers because I understand what you're saying but I cannot accept na na, <laughs> na in the end ganun kalala kasi I think DOH has tried no to fear it. and and before ka naman maka level 2 level 3 hospital sa lugar mo, di dapat may level 1 hospital ka naman. So but ang gastos kasi ni level 2 and level 3, baka that's the reason for every level 3 na, na pinupondohan, ilan yung sinakripisyo mong barangay health centers? Yeah. Yes. Sampung ba yun? Isang daan ba yun? Para lang makabili ka ng MRI and whatever. So anyway, but you know what? There's a lot of um, information that can be done uh, with with um, politicians, di ba? You have, we have to more to help them understand na hindi dadating ito sa ganitong problema, balik tayo dun sa advocacy ko, yung vaping na yan na is taking over the youth. Oh, eh kung ngayon pa lang, klaro tayo na, na masama yan para sa mga kabataan, we do not have to wait 30 years or even 10 or 15 years that these young people who are now vaping every day, every moment of their life, sila din yung papag papagalingin natin. Diba? Correct, and, and, correct. And even counselors, even barangay officials have to know that because sila yung mga kakita, yung mga teenager na nag-vivate, yung mga magulang na nag-vivate. And just to use an example. Anyway. So we're okay, we'll give, we can give you more um, information in the future, Senator Pia. We'll help you look at this. Pero ito lang, very quickly, if you look at the blue um, segments of the bar graph, yun yung hospitals, so that's about 40 to 50%. Yung ambulatory care, tignan mo, uh, Senator Pia, 4% yan ano, um, on, across all the years. Uh, ang konti-konti yung ambulatory care. But yet, if you look at the statistics, um, what is the percentage of uh, uh, people who get sick, where do they go? Most of them, 95% go to uh, no, uh, primary care levels. Only 5% of, it, of uh, the total number of patients at any one time need hospital care. Pero totoo nga, because we were underinvested also in hospital technology, they were asking for a lot. Kasi pag nag-refer ka naman at wala naman silang capability, edi kulang din tayo. But I think kailangan tinitemper at binabalanse yun. Uh, where the need is higher, and I think we all subscribe to that, dapat dun tayo nag invest And then we also prevent the more expensive um, uh, interventions. So, so we will give you more information as we go along. And I will say this with you, Sec, looking at you, Sec Ronquillo. I don't recall in all the years that I was chairman of the Committee on Health and in the three years that I chaired the uh, budget of DOH that anyone presented to me na ito yung proper um, allocation. Because I will follow it, believe me. And if I don't agree, which which I will only disagree if I have other experts telling me that there's another way of looking at it, I will follow that. No one has ever presented that to me. So if I have colleagues who will tell me, kailangan natin maglagay pa ng ganito, ng ganito, I will be the first to say, sandali lang, this is an established um, uh, allocation of priorities. Kailangan natin habul. I would have done that. So I'm very grateful for this presentation. But to be clear, this administration, the previous administration, no one ever presented that to me. See, I now looking at me. She's been with me for more than 10 years. Wala. Diba? Wala. Wala. Okay? So I'm your champion. I will get it done. But present it to me because no one's can I, I do the best I can and and everyone who's involved in healthcare knows that I'm a primary healthcare advocate. But if I don't have that information, 
believe me, I don't think anyone else in the legislation, in the, in the legislative, involved in the legislative process who can make a difference has that information either. Okay, so this is a good breakthrough because now I know what I do not know because you haven't given me that information. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. So going on, uh, so we go into the re requested uh, focus. So when when we invest, where can we get uh, some of the sources of the funds? Next, please. So oh, we already suggested no, um, that we look into the special health fund because the uh, UHC law, uh, RA11223, provides for this. Uh, in Section 20, um, it says that the province-wide or city-wide health system shall pool and manage through a special health fund all resources intended for health services to finance population-based uh, and individual health services, health system operating costs, capital investments, and very importantly, remuneration of additional health workers and incentives for all health workers. So areas, local uh, governments that cannot, um, um, that do not have funds, enough funds for uh, hiring additional health workers that they need may use uh, the special health fund. Uh, but the provision uh, here that the OH in consultation with DBM and LG shall develop guidelines for the use of the special fund. From, from um, what I know from my um, uh, colleagues at the DOH, uh, because I keep asking them, uh, how is it that some of the areas that we visit um, still does not uh, access the special health fund? And I was told that um, there are problems with the guideline setting uh, with DBM and LGUs. And so the special health fund has not been uh, set up um, even what, four years, uh, five years down the road from the institution of the law. Uh, Section 1021 also gives us an idea uh, that uh, PhilHealth actually will help um, uh, fund no, this, uh, this special health fund. Uh, next, please. So if, if you look at a... Um, um, rendition. Oh, it did not come out. Um, there, there was a slide that I put in that you know we have very many sources of the special health fund. Sayang lang that that it's not being used. But what are the what are the quick recommendations to your committee, Senator Pia? Uh, next, please. Ano yung ano ibang iba-ibang sources ng special health fund nyan? Um, ano yan? Um, uh, there. Uh, you have national government financial grants and subsidies okay. from PhilHealth. You also have uh, ODA, NGO, uh, FBO financial grants and institutions that uh, are already uh, earmarked for local health funds. Um, and then you have, um, uh, of course, uh, the LGU budget for uh, for health no? that are uh, earmarked also for the special health fund, especially for health workers. Ang, ang, mas, ang malungkot po ang nangyayari lagi, nahuhuli yung paggamit doon sa health workers. So health system operating costs, capital investments, paggawa ng infrastructure, laging meron yun ang dalawang funds na gagamitin. Pero yung remuneration of additional health workers and incentives, especially for all health workers, uh, that uh, is a big problem up to now that has not been funded. Uh, and then population and individual based services um, are funded also by the LGU based fund. So, so sana kung um, if there can if there are um, uh, well guidelines that um, that can be forged very quickly, uh, this special health fund can uh, come into being and be used. Meron naman dapat special health fund utilization tracking system. Uh, so hindi dapat yan prone to uh, corruption sana but um maraming possible possible at uh, yan so pati yung mga bilateral uh, grants for health uh, pwede ring set aside for the special health fund so um the um uh, quick recommendations for your committee senator pia are the following in the next slide 
Um, sana um, we would like to um, request your committee to look into the status of the special health fund implementation because this is so important and uh, see how we can move this for its immediate release and monitoring. If it is the guidelines that is um, the bottleneck, uh, then get groups together um, and the UHC study group of UP Manila is willing to help out here in, in coming up with the guidelines to make it simple um, and um, and talagang it will go to primary care that that really needs the funds most, especially for health workers. And then uh, maybe um, determine whether there's a need for supplementary legislation at various levels. And I'm not talking only at national levels because like the um, Tobacco Regulation Act, it was very... Um, successful because there were also mirror legislations at the uh, LGU level, yung mga ordinances po nila. And if this is what is necessary, then we should probably get together and come up with model um, ordinances no, to get um, the LGUs to also uh, put up a fund or contribute to this fund. Uh, but that should be done now. Uh, and then one special quick recommendation with regards to nurse uh, migration um we I, I i this is a special advocacy also and you know this senator pia i'd like to re request uh, for us all to think about how we can slow down current recruitment of health human resources especially nurses one one um one idea that I had was, remember how we regulate medical missions, um, uh, how DOH regulates this. We, we put up something uh, to check whether or not the medical missions indeed are helpful or if they come up uh, or they are in areas that are in need of the medical missions. All the recruiters, uh, most of the recruiters, if not all of the recruiters of nurses and student nurses actually come into the country unimpeded. No? Um, they go straight to hospitals, go straight even to schools um, without any checks. Um, we have to slow down this kind of recruitment because uh, what worries us is the, the recruitment becomes now unethical. They recruit whole teams of uh, uh, cardiovascular surgery teams. No? Um, and so when they recruit this to one hospital abroad, um, they don't have any more uh, downtime. Uh, they don't need to be trained because they, they work well together. In the meantime, it's, it's our... Um, uh, healthcare capability here that's hampered. So we have to have longer waits of specialized surgeries because, you know, these teams have already been recruited out. Dapat hindi nagawa yun. Um, also, we have to specify, you know, just how many health workers, um, especially in health facilities, can be recruited at any one time. No? Pag na-breach na, na yung level na yun, uh, dapat wala ng recruitment. Um, the, we talked to the Department of Migrant Workers at one time in casual conversations, and they were saying, if you get us to declare, um, you know, your nurses or uh, specific kinds of nurses with or, specific, or those with specific skills as mission critical, then we can actually slow down or put caps on the recruitment. But I was thinking that because of this critical um, shortage that we are now facing our, and are and is still continuing, we really have to think about how to slow down this uh, current um, unethical recruitment. So that's it uh, for now, Senator Pian. I hope this will help. Thank you. Yes, very helpful. In fact, before I get to go to the next resource person, I'd like to get the quick reaction so we can have a little bit of a, um, a discussion here, Dr. Lorenzo, from both um, DMW and DFA. No? Uh, see, Dr. Lorenzo was basically saying that uh, unethical na talaga yung ginagawa ng ibang recruiters. They will go to our hospitals or our schools and wholesale get the whole uh, group, no? which to me is really like, that's terrible. Like, I mean, honestly, I use the term, it's modern day colonization. <laughs> like they just come in and, and in as much as I will repeat, I respect the right of every Filipino, nurse ka man, abogado ka man, ano ka pa man din, to choose their own future. Um, I will not, I am not 
comfortable and I cannot tolerate that they come in and wholesale uh, recruit this whole group and then paralyze you know uh, a sector of, of uh, our a sector of our um, healthcare that is providing these services to our people whether it's private or public so I just like to get a quick response later on the man we'll talk some more to uh, BMW and to uh, DFA now are these interventions uh, that are easy to make, you know, are these kind of interventions that similar to the protests that you make on some more um, more headline type of materials that, you know, this is unethical, this is jeopardizing the term that Dr. Lorenzo uh, uses, is it mission, what was it you said, is it mission? Is it critical? Um, pwede ba natin gawin yan? Kasi that's something I'd like to do immediately. Who would like to speak first? I leave it to both the two gentlemen to decide. Hello. It was a pleasure. Uh, a few uh, uh, points from the DFA's perspective. When nursing nurses come in, our, uh, our main thrust, of course, is, uh, uh, well, not the deployment, not the regulation, no, but the protection of their rights. And uh, uh, you're aware of our, for example, New York uh, consulate was in touch with uh, well, one of our colleagues from law school, you see, not even one, like their rights, no? Uh, Doctor, yeah, Doctor, uh, yeah, makes uh, strong uh, comment, uh, marks, and by and large, we, like you were learning from them, no. But for example, when we talk to uh, nurses abroad themselves, uh, well, they say the main problem is uh, the economic opportunity, and that, um, uh, and this one is something they claim that there's no relate. There's no a brain drain. There's there's sufficient nurses no, okay. available, but except there are enough graduates, except that you know um, they don't work as nurses. Correct, but things. okay, I understand, and you're sharing with me the perspective of the nurses that you speak to, and I and, and I and I recognize that, and and I I value their comments. They are true, in so far as their perspective is concerned. Like I said, they have all the right to choose to work abroad. I have no qualms with that. I have friends, family, panga, I have family who are nurses in uh in uh, the U.S. Um, but but from a government's perspective, no, from an advocate's perspective, I need to understand what can our government agencies also do. We worked on that last week, so it just so happened na I don't, I don't know kung wala pa yatang DFA invited sa hearing or wala, wala kayo dito last week na. I committed to work on that, that the environment and Dr. Lorenzo herself mentioned that 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 where I, I took notes eh sabi ko well, meron lang akong iPad nung may iPad na ako nung presentation niya nag notes pa ako because it's really important to me what are the reasons why they leave because what are the decent work conditions here what are the growth and career opportunities so noted naman yan noted yan valid yan okay I'm very careful because I don't like to be misquoted I am for the personal growth of every individual here but the perspective I'm looking for is what can DFA and DFW do by way of bilateral agreements, by way of telling these countries that are either sending government missions or private. So I wouldn't know. Ano bang say niyo pag private, di ba? Na teka muna, grabe na yung ginagawa niyo dito. Pumunta kayo sa isang hospital sa isang probinsya. Tinanggal niyo yung buong division na nagmamaternal care or nag emergency care. Can you do this to us? So that's my question. Can that be addressed? Can you handle that? Certainly, when uh, from perspective, for no, because uh, usually when we negotiate uh, bilateral labor agreements, and in this case, health sector health agreements, we're only concerned about the process. Uh, sino ng agency ang involved ang in charge dito, sino ng agency in charge don. Uh, but this would entail a holistic negotiation, no? because before I'm sorry, holistic process, uh, all of government process instead of simply. Uh, we we'll have to change our, our parad paradigm shift. We have to change our mindset. Instead of just uh, okay, uh, well, now no, of course we defer to the B the W no, uh, negotiations. Although kami parin ng leads international cooperation, no. But instead of just uh, talking uh, and saying, "Okay, how will they be protected? How will they be recruited?" Tapat kasama sa kurs mga interagency meetings natin. 
yung other agencies involved, uh, in Chad and all that, uh, in discussing the building position, yeah, which so we, we will raise with them. Except the other side, because usually they're represented only by their labor ministry, maybe, or uh, uh, the health ministry. So uh, things like this, yung, uh, in advance with the SNGs, like, uh, in return, mm -hmm. that you're working, dapat hindi ganito, dapat hindi ganyan. Or you have to have fund their own public health system, for example, or provide a scholarship. Um, well, we can raise that certainly, except uh, they will also have to uh, engage uh, other uh, ministries in their countries for the negotiation. Uh, usually, the mga agreements are just executive agreements, no? And we uh, still not not to because, take too long. Yeah, let, let me just paradigm shift. Yes, I agree with you. It is a paradigm shift, but this has been existing for years. So my challenge to every one of you sitting here now. Do we want to solve this during the time that you, me, us, we are sitting here today? Kasi, how many years ko na tong alam na problema to, I feel bad that no one has ever taken the lead on this. And now that we have a Department of Migrant Workers, my understanding of your job is the welfare of the migrant workers who are there. So that's why, in my limited understanding of your interaction with DFA, DFA to, kasi if I say, I need you to protect the Philippines. I'm not talking about its territorial waters. I'm talking about the health of the Filipinos na by the gallon, by the wholesale nga nila kinukuha yung mga health workers natin. Help me negotiate. I want you to tell me. You tell me how do, how do we do that? How do we negotiate? Agree, paradigm shift. Dictate to me because I will hand it to you on a silver platter and get the people involved so that we can do it. Um, the document that Dr. Tony Dance uh, mentioned, we can share that with all of you. This is not um, new. Other countries have been more proactive in protecting the healthcare their healthcare system. They ensure that if you are going to invite our health workers, then you go through us. Wag niyo silang, wag kayong dumiretsyo sa isang 18-year-old na bata at yes. sa kanyang pag-uulang yes. na gusto lang naman na gumanda buhay nila. Yes. Wag niyo gawin yun, di ba? That, that is abusive behavior. And I'm so happy that you are nodding your heads kasi ba, we all want the best naman for our individual families but collectively as a nation din naman. So lahat kayo nagganat, maraming salamat. Uh, join me every day. <laughs> Napagawa naman natin ito kasi it's not gonna change on its own and we need political will and if I have to ban, I will ban. I will ban direct recruitment. Not because I do not want our... I once was young. I went abroad right after graduating. Not because gusto ko nang tumira sa ibang bansa but I just want to explore. And I don't want to deprive every, every youth of that opportunity. Choice na lang niya as it was my choice to come back to my country. It was my choice to come back to my country, to go to law school and to live in this country. Yes. I hope that is a valid choice we can offer all, right? Yes. So kung gusto niyang mamarsyal doon, mag-masters doon, magtrabaho ng dalawang taon, tapos bumalik, yan ang gusto ko. Ayaw niya bumalik, fine, pero may opportunity siyang bumalik. So, huwag natin paghaluhaluin yung issue because we will divide these issues. Yeah. Do not keep saying kasalanan natin dahil walang career path. We we'll have to that. We will create this career path. Yeah. Ako lang ang fund na binabanggit ni Doktora, okay, himayin natin kasi like I said, eto naman ako, wala namang nagbigay sa akin ng tamang proportion ng, ng pag-allocate ng budget. I'm open. It's my job. I have the last, well, I, the last say is Senator Angara, because he's my boss. He's the chairman of the Committee on Finance. But he will listen to my recommendations if I say, eto tayo sa basic health care, eto tayo dun sa other, other, um, other uh, beyond basic health care. So, on that note, pakinggan naman namin ikaw, ASEC, sandali. And these are just responses to these uh, recommendations, no? Okay po. Um, uh, maraming salamat po, Honorable Senator, uh, Madam Chair. From our perspective naman po, where we are mandated to balance yung freedom of movement as well as the right to decent and gainful employment overseas and the promotion of welfare of OFWs, we, we do have concrete strategies that we can um, pursue. And um, one, I, I, I'll cite very concretely one that is closest to the heart of Secretary Ople, one that she's advocating for right now is that um, yung initiative po ng contribution towards sustaining 
the viability of human resource sa pamamagitan ng initiative ng pagsusupport sa higher education ng ating mga bilateral partners. For example, um, specific communities that are host to uh, students that are enrolled in the healthcare discipline, uh, bubuhusan natin ng scholarships. Number two po, meron actually... Pero say, bubuhusan natin ng scholarship. Uh, Dapat yung kausap din natin ng mga bansa, magbuhus din sila ng scholarship. Yes, po. So that's what you meant, okay? That's what I meant, Madam Senator. Apo, oh, diba? apo. Sinabi ko na ito before na para tayo nagpapaaral ng health workers ng ibang bansa. Yes po. Um, yung pong country of destination na uh, bilateral partner natin will have to pitch in, will have to contribute to the education of our future supply. Uh, that's basically... Nice that. Because that is a reality. Kung tayo nag-umibili nag, nag ng resources sa ibang bansa, kinukuha nila yung resources natin na wala man lang kabayaran. Yes, po. That's the reality. Yes, And then number two, uh, madam, would be yung clear na reintegration at circular migration na program natin. Meron po kasing policies based na sa Republic Act 11641 where we can strengthen the reintegration and return migration program of government if there's a clear career pathing for our healthcare workers, specific for our healthcare professionals, then there's a chance that uh, we could um, entice them back and retain them here in our country bilang professionals who go beyond doon sa sinasabi nga po ni Doc kanina na yung retirement age natin is going um, uh, longer and longer and we can still be productive and contribute to our, to our society uh, even beyond 65 years. I just think of it this way, no? If at around 22 graduate na ba sila niyan? At 22 with, with senior high? At 22 graduate na sila? Sabi mo na lang 24 sila mag-start ng career to? 30 years. At 54 Regardless of the benefits in some country, Apa, they always come back and be a part-time part nurse, part-time health worker, professor, ang dami, pero wala tayong program. Yes, so I'm here to help, but I need people who will make those programs. Yes, po. Uh, and third, Madam Senator, would be uh, um, there's actually policy space for the uh, implementation of what the Doctor has earlier mentioned on mission critical skills. Kung kinakailangan pong yung MCS mechanism natin ay uh, ma-regulate rationally yung outflow ng specific uh, occupations at a certain period in time kung saan hindi ganon ka-viable yung supply, then we can also do that. Kasi meron naman po talaga tayong policy space for that at the Department of Migrant Workers. Number four would be... Um, um, And that's not very popular and that wouldn't be my first ano naman. Kasi, yes. kasi siyempre, tatamaan dyan, depende sa patch na tatamaan. Kawawa naman din. So hindi naman natin gusto mangyari yun unless crisis na crisis, katulad yes, po. yung hide ng COVID, di ba? But you're right, it's your job naman to tell us na ganun. But I'd like to emphasize na we're really looking for these great programs na anyone can can have that choice kung saan. I mean, if I, I when you were mentioning nga na how to entice them back, simple lang yan for me eh. I've, uh, I've, I've reached barangays that uh, I don't think the average person can reach because you can only go there by foot, by, by, by walking sa mga bundok. And why are the teachers still there? Why are they there? Why didn't they go, they, why didn't they pursue another profession? Because they like to live. Diba? Gusto nila yung sariwang hangin. They want to be among their family. So there are different reasons that will entice different people naman to either stay or come back. Nasa sa kanila na yun. Diba? The choices are there. Yun lang naman yung sa atin. Eh. Diba na mabigay yung choices na yun? And um, number four, Madam Senator, would be yun din pong revolving around the idea of ethical recruitment. Ito po yung co-management bilateral co-management ng healthcare worker supply by implementing ethical recruitment principles doon po sa mga bilateral labor agreements natin na sinasabi nating not properly implemented. Pero may mga provision, may mga giving back provisions yung ating mga bilateral. So, may model ka na yan? We, it's just a concept. Mayroon po sa Saskatchewan and other uh, provinces. 
Merong Kaya ganyan ng ibang bansa eh. Matagal na. 12 years ago na rin ko na. Apo. So, sige. Good yan. Can you wrap up lang? Only because I have another resource person. I'll call you pa naman later eh. Yes po. But, uh, just two short okay. points na lang po, madam. Uh, yung strengthen na pre-departure tsaka pre-deployment services ng ating gobyerno where it should be the whole of government, whole of society, whole of industry approach para well-informed ang mga aalis na professionals natin, what are the, uh, what are the um, gives and what are the takes when they leave the country, ano yung mababakit nilang uh, wards, ano yung departments ng hospital na mababakit nila. That should be strengthened uh, and uh, specifically para po sa sectors that matter, for example, the healthcare sector. And the last point, madam, would be siguro yung pagiging mindful natin na we at the international level um, contributor po tayo dun sa UN Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration and that Global Compact is also mindful of the sustainability of international migration. Uh, yun lamang po yung aking six quick points, madam. Very nice. Thank you. Very nice. I'll, I'll text uh, Secretary Ople later kasi aligned kami dyan. I'm very happy. Thank you, ASEC. Um, Okay, we have a resource person who I would like to call because she is boarding a flight, no? Um, unahin lang natin. Well, siya naman talaga ang text pala. Um, Dr. Raminer Bancalimag, who is the president of the Philippine Medical Association. Ma'am, thank you for being with us uh, last week pa and, and today you have the floor. Uh, for our part, I will just flash on your screen, is that our uh, number of members of the Philippine Medical Association? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, we can, we can, we can okay. hear you. We, we actually have 93,904 members as of now. Uh, and uh, if you will notice at the profile of members, most of them are in cities. For cities, uh, whether in the provinces, in city, double city, uh, so one the city, all of this uh, different component societies have members, something from 1,200 to uh, 7,000 members. The biggest is actually in Quezon City and in Manila. Okay, so uh, now the next uh, thing is for the Members who are active, we all actually have uh, active membership of about 60,000. For the uh, 93,904, uh, this is actually uh, aligned with the number of uh, active members who are renewing their licenses with the PRC. So, as to the profile of the different special societies, can I have the next slide, please? So, if you notice, we have eight special celebrations, and uh, they have a track record of actually producing uh, specialists you know, from 62 years to a maximum of 36 years for the surgeons. Next. So here are the number of residents in training. This is for one year. And uh, of course, these are divided into different year levels. So if, for example, we have a total of 5,761 for uh, maybe about one-fourth of that are graduating every year. And they are the ones that are actually being deployed by the Department of Health uh, before they actually go into fellowship training. So these are the residency trainings. And the number of res uh, residency training programs are 717. Next slide. So for the number of subspecialty societies, uh, across the eight special divisions are 75 uh, some special societies, and then training programs. We have like 42 members of 
number of periods in three years at 1,600 years. So if we get the tower statistics of that, we have the next slide. We have at least 11,376. Now our problem is actually uh, uh, as I said, uh, many of the uh, officials that graduate their special experience are uh, actually going into the cities, so, and then uh, we remember for the Philippine Medical Association, the Association of Municipal Health Officers uh, are actually included in the uh, society of, uh, of uh, physicians in public health, those in uh, uh, physicians in uh, academic settings also are included in the Philippine Medical Association. So I think uh, one of the things that we would like to recommend is really to fast track the integration of the medical profession. Uh, Senator Tia, with your help on that. Because one, uh, we want all of the physicians to be able to be on board so that uh, we will be able to uh, cross uh, collaborate with the Department of Health regarding the uh, one power distribution. Uh, I agree that uh, perhaps we should also look into the uh, proportion of uh, specialists, for example, because if we are going to uh, uh, have, for example, the specialty hospitals that uh, are being uh, uh, developed in the different provinces, we have to also look at the uh, accessibility of these hospitals. Uh, for example, if we have an uh, apex hospital, for example, in Cagayan de Oro, uh, the northern Mindanao region, for example, if you know, the next uh, the next place no, is two hours away from Cagayan de Oro. And then the other, uh, you know, Medina, for example, is also two hours away. Come again, can either go directly to Cebu by a plane or so by uh, Rogo, to Molina and take the two hour long trip. So we are, uh, our difficulties actually are in the, uh, uh, what do you call this, accessibility because of uh, geographical distance. So these are things that we have to consider, you know, especially the deployment once the uh, hospitals for specialty uh, uh, specialties you know, are uh, already in place. So you know, I hope that uh, we will be able to have a better profile once we cross those uh, what do you call this checklist with any of the data that we have with the Department of Health. Also, uh, another thing that we have to consider is that uh, perhaps uh, many of our physicians, also in the Department of Health, can be actually recruited uh, for uh, work uh, in the different areas. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mom. Uh, maybe I, I know. I know you are. Uh, Catching a flight, no. Um, so I couldn't hear everything you said clearly, but I'd like to invite you to a meeting then, Siguro, and then meeting or hearing, yes. no, but am yes. I more inclined to have a smaller group um, uh, in the ne at the next level? Because what I feel needs to be done along with UH is to pinpoint where are the areas that we don't have enough doctors and what do we do about it, right? Are there solutions? Yes. Now? And I, I recognize that you discuss uh, specialties and quality. Um, in our previous discussions and even today, our emphasis natin is primary health care. So, correct, correct, correct. I know in other countries, aside from um, uh, tayo, when they finish med, you're a general practitioner. Um, but there is a subspecialty now that is family medicine. And uh, I know in other countries, just from, just from my chat with doctors, uh, Europe, 
uh, graduate ng medicine, hindi uh, ka pwede mag-practice without a supervising doctor. Kasi parang doktor ka nga, pero you don't have a specialty yet. So parang you're only released to become a dependent on your own after that uh, parang residency mo. And that would be like yung, yung higher level ng GP, my understanding is yung parang family med nga. So we really have to explore these things, no? Um, in, in the last hearing, I pointed out that even sa curriculum and Dr. Milabel, I'm so high. I'm so happy that you're here with us because I really wanted Chet to be involved in this. No? Now, how do we um, help young people and their parents? Because obviously, it's from the children. And it's influence naman talaga ang parents. Determine their, their future careers. And if it's not clear to them, then naman na uh, yung lahat ng career options, sayo din naman. Sayang din naman na hindi nila makuha yung career option na nakakatulong na sa bayan, maganda palang opportunity sa kanila. And again, I will I will repeat the example I gave na sinabi ng, na I think, kayo ba yun, Music, nagsabi? Or who was it who said last year na kulang ang, ah, walang, or what, sorry, I can't remember who the resource person was, but the statement was, walang takers ng occupational therapy sa isang, sa, I think, two SUCs or, or overall, whatever. And then nagtingin na kami ni Senator, ano, Senator Villanueva kasi we both know personally, from personal experience, napakahirap maghanap ng occupational therapy. So, bakit walang takers? Diba? So, again, of course, alam natin, career path, um, uh, greener opportunities, whatever. The point is, hindi lang naman pwedeng sabihin na Walang may gusto mag-occupational, di ba? Hindi din na po-promote yung careers na yan. Anyway, so thank you, Dr. Kalimag. But um, uh, the initial info you gave us, uh, gusto mo pa talagang himayin to sa susunod. Maraming salamat po. Yes po, yes po. Thank you. So let's go now to our next resource person um, from Filipino Nurses United, uh, the National Vice President, Ms. Maristela Abenohar. And then after, we will call on Ched, and Neda. Okay. Um, magandang hapon, Madam Chair, Senator Pina Cayetano. Um, ganun din po sa lahat ng resources speakers na nandirito ngayon. Um, we are very thankful na na-invite po ang uh, Filipino Nurses United no, to present our recommendations. Um, as you already know, Filipino Nurses United is a labor association of nurses. And we do agree with the intention of uh, Senate Resolution. Hello? Am I clear? We can hear you. We can hear you. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Okay. And we are in agreement with uh, Senate Resolution Number 536 to really investigate on the status of our uh, health care workers. No? Because for for a fact, na naniniwala kami na uh, the improvement of our health care system to become responsive must also be not only looking at the welfare of our healthcare workers, but also the health needs of our clients or of, of the Filipino people. So I will not read as advice the statement of FNU, but I will go straight to some of our recommendations. Uh, we know for a fact that uh, our nursing uh, the crisis ngayon is actually a health crisis. No? Um, it is ironical nga po that we are one of the highest exporter of nurses in the whole world. Sabi nila wala daw Filipino, walang bansa na walang Filipino nurse. No? And yet, eto tayo, we're suffering from chronic understaffing. Hindi ho namin ito tinatawag na shortage because as the statistics have uh, been presented by our first resource speakers last March 27, we have enough supply of nurses. Sabi nga ni PRC Commissioner Erwin Enad, we have about 590,000 active or licensed nurses out of the 951,000 plus registered nurses. So 
Ang tanong din, nasan yung iba? Nasan yung iba or bakit hindi active ang iba? Well, we know for a fact na issue ito na pinalala ng COVID-19 pandemic. But now, at present, pinapalala naman ito ng patuloy no, na recruitment sa ating mga nurses palabas ng bansa. Uh, we believe that we have to focus on the root causes of this. No? Kasi nakaka-affect na talaga ito sa patient care natin. So number one, kailangan itaas po ang sahod ng mga nurses. Alam natin na sa pamahalaan or sa gobyerno, after 18 years na naipasa ang nursing law, doon lamang ipinatipad yung salary grade 15 at entry salary. But until this time, marami pa po ang hindi nag implement ng salary grade 15 o itong 35,000 plus. Meron po kaming mga members from other provinces like for from Surigao and Agusan na nagkiklaim na wala pa po silang, uh, hindi pa po ini-implement ang SG-15. SG-11 pa rin ang tinatanggap nila until now. No? Uh, pangalawa, um, gusto rin po namin sabihin na itong sahod na ito ay hindi na uh, commensurate or enough doon sa uh, cost of living ngayon. In 2018, ang Ibon na uh, Research Foundation po ay nagtabas ng datos na kailangan ng 32,000 a month para po sa monthly uh, cost of living. But that was 2018. No? So 2023 na po tayo ngayon. At we are aware of the inflation rate na dinaanan natin. Kaya hindi talaga nakakabuhay ang sahod na meron tayo. Pangat Pangatlong concern is, hindi naman po pinapatupad ang SG-15 sa lahat ng pantay-pantay. May ibang mga LGUs na mas mababa yung amount na pinapatupad because of the income na sinasabi nila na uh, hindi nila afford no, na ipatupad ang SG-15. Also, ang counterpart natin na nasa private sector, ang ating mga nurses in the private sector are or only earning 570 pesos per day, or that is 12,540 pesos a month. No, 12,000. Saan, saan da, aabot ang halaga na ito, natatanggalan pa ito ng ibang deductions. No? Kahit uh, single ang ating nurse, hindi siya mabubuhay, lalo na kung may dependent siya. So, ang isa pa ay meron tayong regionalization ng wage board. Kaya sweldo sa NCR na 570 pesos na day, iba yan pagdating paglabas mo ng NCR. Merong equivalent yan ay nasa 300 uh, plus lang a day. No? Masyadong mababa. Kaya po uh, kami uh, sa Filipino Nurses United ay uh, nananawagan sa ating pamahalaan na it's time to increase the salaries of our nurses. Yan yung isang push factor. Bakit maraming nurses ang nagre-resign at lumalapas ng bansa? We want a just and living wage and we recommend 50,000 pesos entry salary both public and private. So ang tanong, paano sa private? We recommend na sana the government subsidize our small and medium scale health facilities. Ikalawa po is security of tenure. No? Uh, ang alam natin na ang uh, nursing ay essential and vital. No? And in fact, we are the largest workforce in the health sector. Kaya nga 24-7 na trabaho ito. Hindi ito seasonal. So hindi dapat kinokontraktual. Dapat regular ka agad yung position. And yet marami tayong contract of service, job order, no? at nurse deployment program in the past. No? Na itong implementation ng Bandanas ruling ay libo-libong nurses ang nawalan ng trabaho. Baho. Dahil nung na red devolve ang health programs from DOH to LGUs, marami po ang hindi na uh, natanggap or ng LGU na NDPs. Batangas alone, 500 plus po ang natanggalan ng trabaho na NDPs. No? Kaya gusto natin na maging secured. Um, hindi po dapat ginagawang contractual ang uh, trabaho ng ating mga nurses. Um, dapat siguro investigahan din ng uh, ating uh, committee kung ilan ba talaga yung vacant plantilla position na meron tayo. 
at ilan yung dapat na kinikreate na plantilya position. Ang tendency kasi minsan sa infrastructure enhancement, facility enhancement, nagdadagdag ng beds, ng bed capacity, hindi naman nagdadagdag ng personnel. Alam po ba natin na ang nurse to patient ratio ay greatly affected by this chronic understaffing. Uh, Lampas-lampas po ang uh, bilang ng pasyente yung pinakarga ng ating mga nurses sa ospital. Sa Department of Health, sinasabi nila ng standard ay one nurse to 12 patients sa isang regular ward. Pero ang current ay nasa 20 to 50 patients sa isang ward. Sa mga mental hospital patients, ang ibang nurses natin ay one nurse, 100 patients no sa isang ward. Yun ang kanilang uh, inaalagaan. So napakalaki nung nung risk na kinakaharap ng ating mga nurses. Pero hindi po ito nabibigyan no, ng uh, particular na attention. Um, nais din po namin ipaabot sa committee na ito na itong contractualization ay uh, patuloy, patuloy na, na, na uh, ginagawang practice sa ating mga ospital. At kung hindi man nila ito ginagawa, ini-increase nila ang work hours. Ngayon, makikita mo hindi na 8 hours ang mga nurses natin sa hospital. Ang iba sa kanila ay 12 hours. Yan na po yung minsan kalakaran, hanggang 16 hours. Pero hindi lang po yan sa ospital or sa public health. Kahit halimbawa sa teaching, Ang ating mga nurses ay nasa mga teaching universities and colleges. Nagpe-prepare ng ating mga future nurses. Alam po ba natin na kulang na kulang din ang ating mga nurses na nasa teaching uh, jobs? No? May gusto akong ibigay na isang halimbawa na isang member namin na tapos po siya ng dalawang masteral degree at may doctoral degree. Ang hinahawakan po niyang uh, studyante ay mayroong level 1 na 82 students, meron pong level 3 sa clinical duty na 84 patients, meron pa po siyang uh, level 4 na teaching skills 54 uh, students. So total of about 220 students ang kanyang hinahawakan, ang workload ng isang uh, nurse na ito. Pero ang tawag po sa kanya instructor 1. At ang kanyang salary po ay salary grade 12. Nasa 27,000 namang po mahigit ang kanyang sinasahod. No? So tingnan po natin yan kasi kahit po sa ibang universities, ito na po yung reklamo nila kasi ang daming estudyante, kulang po tayo sa magtuturo. DepEd po naman na school nurses natin, uh, nagsisimula po sa sweldo na uh, nurse 2. Pero yun na po yun. Hanggang sa mag-retire sila, nurse to po yun. So, hindi na po siya na nabibigyan ng pagkakataon na ma-promote at mataasan yung sweldo. At marami pang ibang bagay. Kaya mahalaga po itong uh, security of tenure at saka ito pong salaries na agaran nating ma mabigyan ng pansin. No? Ikatlo po, yung tungkol sa Ma benefits. Ma'am, sandali, no? kasi po, I have more resource persons and I have a meeting chat at 3.30. Yes. So, I, need, I I have a copy naman po of your position paper. I yes, just po. want to, to, if you want to summarize, well, kasi, ano, like, extend na po tayo because unlike last time, yes, I really have to finish the resource persons I have left today. So, kindly wrap up na po. Yes, Ms. Ch uh, Madam Chair. Dalawang points na lang po. Yung pangatlo po ay tungkol po sa benefits. Uh, nabanggit po kasi nung March 27 at kahit kanina uh, ng ibang resource speaker, yung magna-carta of public health workers na dapat ma-review. Pero kami po ay nananawagan na saan po ay bigyan din natin ng pansin ang paggawa ng batas para sa magna-carta of private health workers. So, meron po kami, Madam Chair, na nabuo sa tulong ng ating mga union sa private hospital. At pang pang panghuli po, ay nais po sana namin na taasan ang budget pang kalusugan upang sa ganun po ay mabigyan natin ng sapat na budget yung uh, pangangailangan natin sa mga nursing personnel, hospital man or public health. So, yun lang po, Madam Chair. Thank you very much po. Thank you. Ma'am, I assure you on my watch for the last three years, 
pataas mo ng pataas ang budget ng health. And hindi lang sa kung saan-saan, but I really, my team and I have really exerted a lot of efforts to put the funding where it will have the biggest impact. We worked very closely with DOH and the different groups. So you can rest assured na talagang hinihimay natin yan. No? And we know that the nurses are a big component of our successful health delivery system. So thank you very much, ma'am. And this won't be the last time kasi like I said, I want to have more fruitful uh, discussions. I, we will break down into small groups itong mga katulad niyo po who are willing to work with us to help find solutions. Maraming salamat, ma'am. Salamat po. So our next resource person is Dr. Mirabel. It's it's your turn. And then after, please be ready, Neda, Dole, uh, TFA. Parang ang dami naman to. Parang hindi ko yata ito kakayanin. <laughs> ah, observers na pala yung iba. Nasyak ako kasi may meeting ako sa chat in 20 minutes. Okay. Very briefly lang po ito, ma'am. Go ahead. Go ahead, ma'am. Buenas tardes. Senator Pia Cayetano, I'm very happy to be here. And also, buenas tardes to everyone. Uh, this one naman yung background, kung ba't buenas tardes ang, visit, ang banggit mo sa kanila, baka kala na tayo, tayong tatlo lang ni Yusek, kasi ayan naman eh, dating uh, uh, congen sa Barcelona yan. Kayo naman po eh, from Samuang City and dating president ng State United Chat. So, yun ang reason kung ba't nagpapatiyan kami ng buenas tardes. Papaturo po ako sa kanilang siya, baka nang tinitext ko pa. <laughs> Paano ba to? Kasi naroon ako mag-Bisaya, naroon ako mag-Spanish. So pinagdidikit-dikit ko na lang lahat yun. <laughs> you see? So thank you very much. Ito po ang, ang dami-daming challenges as far as nursing is concerned. Di ba? Nursing and nurses talaga nakakahilo yung mga story na yun. But anyway, I just like to present very briefly in three slides what initiatives you are taking uh, to address the current situation. So... Siyempre kami, ma'am, because we are, our concern is sa curriculum po, I'd just like to make a declaration na wala pa tayong bagong curriculum po. But, but in the news, can you, can you clear, clearly state, yes, in the news it was reported na Chen is looking into? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh -huh. So there are two things. Uh, we still, CMO number 15 series of 2017 is still in place. However, the proposed, program that we are trying now to come up with to be relevant with the time. And this has to go through pa consultations at the internal and external uh, stakeholders. Ito po yung uh, pinisent in the other day. But uh, we are trying to look into this because this might now take uh, multi-sectoral uh, consultations. However, we'd like to say that uh, this curriculum proposed PSM curriculum uh, starts with or kicks off with exit credentials. Okay, so uh, this covers first year up to fourth year pa rin. Kasi ang end product talaga, ang curriculum talaga natin is 21. PSM, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Yung po yes. emphasis natin. Can I, can I, um, your, your one slide is very clear. Yes po. So if I may, state it as I understand this, yes, no? Um, may exit program, that the end result is a bachelor's degree in nursing. Yes. And may exit program ka after first year, that's a certificate, and after the second or third year, something like that, a yes. diploma. In a yes. nutshell. Ganun. In a nutshell. Okay. Um, the reason I'm, I'm cutting to the chase is because this is very, very important to me. Why? Uh, Pag nanonood ako ng, ano, ng mga pelikula or mga sitcom or whatever man ng US, naalala mo yun, they call it, and my mom was once, candy stripper ba yung tawag nila doon? Yung parang nurse aide ka yeah. sa hospital sa Amerika na parang you're an assistant, di ba? They're high school. They are high school. Tapos, babanggitin ko na naman ang aking minamahal na majority floor leader, Joel Villanueva, champion naman namin sa TESTA, sa TechPog training. Kung yun nga high school, nakakatulong na doon. What more kung nag-specialized program ka in TechPog, di ba? So, a line yung na-revisualize ko doon sa sinasabi nyo. And it is consistent also with our Ladrice Education Law, which the late Senator Angara, the father of our uh, chairman of the Committee on Finance, um, 
uh, pioneered and I was the one who passed that law in 2015, 2016, around that time, tama? So, parang laderize to. Pwede ka na mag-exit ng first year, pwede ka magtrabaho because the purpose of, I will interpret it the way I understand it and you are free to tell me iba naman yung gusto niyo, fine. I'm just telling you this is how I interpret what you are showing me. After first year and or second year, third year, that's a ladderized program. You can exit, you can work because kailangan mo maghanap buhay or for whatever reason, na point ka. My mom, by the way, is a preschool teacher, started with nursing. And she decided somewhere along the way, I think first year, second year pa lang, na hindi niya gusto. So ganun din yun, di ba? Pwede ka mag-exit ng first year, pwede ka mag-exit ng second year, but you will have some kind of recognition for what you finished. And you will be able to work painfully, correct? Yan ang intindi ko. And then you can go up to fourth year, and if, I'd like, if I would like to be able to continue that, you can even recreate this program with all the other sciences and the other allied health programs. Pro pro professions. So you could do that for therapies, right? So like there are so many, I, I can only speak from experience. I am an athlete and up to this day I have a battery of professionals that help me maintain my, my desire to be healthy and fit and also to be co competitive. So I have a sports conditioning coach. I have a strength training coach. I have a, I have a massage therapist. I have a lot of sports psychologist. I wish I did, but I don't. Um, <laughs> So I have this battery of, uh, and then I have an orthopedic doctor, I have a muscular skeletal special, lahat yan natatawagan ko, physical therapist, kasi nga, that is the whole, ano, diba, the, the whole uh, range of professions that can help an athlete, and so on and so forth in all the pro pro professions. So you can actually replicate this, correct, in other professions. If you wanted to, you could. Yes, ma'am. What is our really basic concern is really, really look into the competencies because we would like to really ensure of the safety course. and general welfare for clients. Ma'am, babalikan kita dun sa sinabi ko. Kung yung high school student ay nakakapag-assist in some way, di ba? Kung kaya nilang alalayan yung na-stroke, kailangan pa bang nurse na may, na may, na may bachelor's degree ang aalalay or... or um. PT, ang aalala yung magsusundo. Hindi, di ba? Hindi naman yun ang kailangan sumundo doon sa room para nalit sa PT, PT room para alala. Ang magtuturo is the PT. Pero di ba lahat naman yan pwede may assistant? Yun lang naman ang sakin. Let's not take forever. Kasi it's so tiring. Eh. It's so tiring for the Filipino people to wait for us to make decisions. That's precisely, that's precisely ma'am, why I'll go to the last of my slide. Ano timeline nito? Three months. And tomorrow, ma'am, kasi tomorrow we have a meeting. <laughs> tomorrow we have a meeting. And <laughs> ang galing ang sagot, I usually tumatawa na mas mahaba. Ikaw, in three months, ginawa ko. Di ba, kasi ma'am, tomorrow we have a meeting and this is one of the issues that we will be talking about. But I'd like to emphasize that Chet will sit with industry and facilitate memorandum of agreements in between the industry and HEI to directly hire graduates to their healthcare institutions, specifically nursing degree with exit credentials. And the second and the foremost is partnership with TESDA to map out skills and competencies to provide greater access to students and explore possible career pathways through the Philippine credit transfer system. So credit transfer system, yun lang po ang aming uh, sharing for today because uh, there will be consultations yet to take place. Well, I understand, but what I want you to, again, using the words of Yusek de Vega, paradigm shift. I understand you have a job to do. I understand you want to ensure that they are competent for whatever title we give them or to perform those tasks. But meanwhile, ang kapalit nun is wala. Wala. Walang gumagawa. That's where we are. So we need to be innovative. We need to be able to take risk, um, reasonable risk, to make these changes. Kasi in the meantime, wala. Yun ang kapalit. That's precisely, uh, Chair Popo is really looking into this to ensure that we take uh, action and come up with innovative program. And um, one other intervention that I have is what do we do with the nurses who are not board passers but would like to practice? What do we do? Ma uh, we know that there are nurses who graduated and are or are not board passers in other professions. Choice naman nila yon. Um, again, I feel it's the burden of uh, government or maybe government direction but also the private sector to give them their opportunity to work in the field yes, that they chose. But 
what about those who did not pass? Kaya, mabalik ko yan sa inyo. Pagka, pagka pinuksan nyo ulit yung mga schools, ako, sisiguraduhin ko, magpa, kumaya kayo ng schools na may track record na kaya magpapasa. Huwag nyo, huwag binanakaw lang natin yung hard-earned money ng mga parents na papabayaan yung pumasok dun sa skwela na ano na yung, yung percentage ng passing nila, mahiya naman sila. Yes, ma. But relevant to what you have just stated, that's precisely why, along with this slide, the previous slide before this, we talk about upskilling and reskilling our nurses. Because we talk about the repeaters, we talk about those who are not practicing the profession, and we'd like to have partnerships with industry and hospitals for more exposure to clinical areas, community immersion. We'd like also to do update and retooling of the BSN program, offer other job roles for underboard nursing graduates, and then involvement of industry partners and providing incentives and financial support to deserving nursing graduates who pass the nursing licensure examination. So actually, ma'am, yung upskilling and reskilling really is part of our strategies or approaches to help to address the current issue. Oh, pero let's for. let's um let's not be let's talk about what is difficult to talk about in the first place. May mga school hat siya na hindi magaling magturo at nagpa at tumanggap sila ng mga estudyante but that may not really have the aptitude for that course. And then, kinuha nila yung pera ng mga magulang, pinaasa nila na hindi naman pala nila kayang turuan. Like ako, sabi mo kahit mag-boost ng pera yung magulang ko para maging doktor, baka masayang ko yung pera ng magulang ko dahil hindi ko pala aptitude yun, di ba? So, yun lang, yun yung reality doon eh. Huwag na natin dagdagan yung sakit na ulo na, na gano'n ang nangyayari. Kasi not only is it a... Painful experience not to pass the board, I would think, di ba, na naawa ka sa sarili mo dahil di ka pumasa, awa ka sa magulang mo, nahihiya ka. But let's not perfect with that, di ba? Kasi mag-retool ka, mag-reskill ka in the first place, but kailangan to it. It's a different thing when we talk about um, adapting to new to new technology or new skills that are required by yes. the 21st century. Yes. Sa'yo, Ana? Yeah. Maingat ako na pag nakukuha tayo, hindi ko sinasabing huwag kayong mag-offer ng ganong programs. Kailangan yun. Pero in the first place na, bakit ba dyan siya napunta sa course na yan na hindi talaga yan ang happy? Yes, hindi po. Talaga. Okay. So okay. we will really ensure that all of these mom are noted and we will be putting this as one of the items for discussion tomorrow. At saka yung, yung papayagan nyo ng nursing school, tingnan nyo naman muna kung meron siyang mga courses na papapasa siya. Kasi wala siya papapasa na nursing na ibang courses. Okay, so, pa bukas. Kawawa yung tao. Tapos, tapos ka lahat, I don't know the percentage, but how much of that is government funding also? Because ang lawak-lawak na ng ating mga scholarship programs. Along that line, ma'am, meron din po tayo strict guidelines for uh, approving the opening of uh, nursing school. Nursing school. Pati kayo nun, ha? Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias ulit. Otra vez. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Ano ba? Guys, patapos na itong mga iba. Ay, ito nung pipa. Alas, di pa, di pa siya. Okay. So, we have NEDA, DOLE, and DFA um, to speak. So, sa NEDA, Director Gurley Grace Casimiro Intikben from Social Development Staff. Thank you, uh, Senator P. and Dr. So we're just going to share um, the possible economic impact. It's uh, it was requested to us in the yes. status of the national HRH month yes. plan, and the uh, possible strategies, which I think is very aligned with uh, what the uh, Chen was uh, proposing. Uh, first on the possible impact of HRH shortages, uh, we identified initially four um, possible uh, impact. One is increased healthcare costs because with the shortage of healthcare workers, it will prompt higher investments from healthcare organizations to cover higher remuneration to attract and retain workers. So this may lead to higher out-of-pocket healthcare costs for patients and higher insurance premiums from employers and governments. Because it will be passed on. Yes, yes. Less access to yes, those less who cannot afford. Yes, like the senator. And then second is uh, there will be reduced productivity and reduced access to healthcare because with healthcare worker shortages, this can lead increased workloads to the existing staffs. 
which can reduce their productivity and increase their risk of burnout and turnover. And that's already what was being discussed by our representative from uh, from Philippines. Yes, ma'am. From Filipino Nurses United. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. It's and already being experienced burnout, too many patients to take care of. Yes, Senator. And it will lead to a negative impact on the quality of care that our patients are Which Again, it's also reflected by our shorter lifespan, but the higher FM, uh, maternity mortality rate and infant mortality. So it, we're already seeing it, actually. Yes, Senator. And then the negative impact on economic growth, uh, of course, because uh, we know that healthcare is a major source of employment and economic activity in the country. So with these shortages, it would really have an impact on that. And then last is uh, increased burden on our caregivers because without sufficient healthcare workers, the burden will be transferred to the family members. And we know that it is also a gender issue because females in the family predominantly will be uh, given that function of taking care or of, uh, of the patients in the uh, family. And then in terms of the status of the HRH Master Plan 2023-2040, this was already approved by the NEDA Board Social Development Committee uh, cabinet level. So uh, it was approved already last um, June 2022 20, last year. Um, there are already projections that uh, were done uh, by DOH NEDA in support, with the support of the Asian Development Bank. In terms of the total HRH uh, gap, uh, this only includes uh, next slide. This only includes the uh, barangay health worker, barangay nutrition scholar, registered nurse, midwife, medical technology physicians for government and private sector. So we are seeing that in uh, 2020 to 2040, we will be needing around 2,630,970 HRH. With this administration, we will be needing. 1,163,192 HRH. And then for the uh, total HRH uh, gap, uh, the government side will be needing 860,774 total. And then for this administration, it's around 412,062. That's for the government. For the private sector, we'll be needing uh, a higher um, HRH, that's 1,770,204. And for the mark of this administration, 761,230. It would require um, a total budget requirement. For uh, until 2040, from 2020, we'll be needing around 12.1 trillion pesos. And for this administration, we'll be needing around 2.45 trillion. This will cover the trainings and the uh, salary, the remuneration of uh, the uh, HRH. And then uh, on the possible strategies to address the HRH um, shortage, uh, we're happy to note the uh, Chet's presentation a while ago because our first uh, recommendation really is to implement a uh, step-up ladder for the health care group. Uh, we are seeing already this in the UP Manila. They are doing it. They have the senior high school. Um, certificate for uh, community health work. So they are already they already have that. And then UP Manila also. UP Manila. So yes. UP Manila is um, uh, administering a senior high program. Yeah. Uh, yes. Based on our um, directly with community them. Health. Directly with them or or para may senior high silang. They have. It's directly with them. So, so as a senior, so sila mismo. Yes, ah, that's very. I'm very happy to hear that. So that can be done. Ano, bilabel ng the other. Oh, oh, kasi i ano ko lang ha. Sorry. It's it's the tempo of the senior high school. Yes, yes. Kasi banggiting ko lang na even before the pandemic. Um, ah, example lang. Nagtay up ang isang tech company sa Tagig. Tapos parang uh, parang gusto nga nila grade 10 yata kasi parang 3-year program yata sila. Nothing to do with health. It's a tech company. Pero grade 10 to so more beyond ele, grade 11 and 12 sila. They wanted na ano, senior high plus 2 years in college. So, but, but I recall nga parang beyond mga senior high so baka grade 9 or grade 10 palang alaga nila. And if you look at the programs in Europe, which I'm sure you have your people who are doing that, apprenticeship is more effective. I, I read very recently and I think it's the World Economic Forum or Harvard Business Review, apprenticeship is more effective 
than than schooling. Kasi nga, on the job ka, and it's more interesting, the retention. So, it's really, ano, di ba, again, paradigm shift. Pero kailan pa? In, in our generation naman? Or in our term of office? Sige, ma'am, go ahead. Yes, uh, Senator. So, so uh, that we wanted to, uh, that, that's very supportive. Uh, the net is very supportive with that um, curriculum of uh, the CHED. And then, uh, we just wanted to, ano po, uh, to emphasize yung, uh, Although we have this ladder, it's because the gigging problem, especially with the mga K to twelve, natin, they are not uh, being hired. So uh, we wanted sana na to have it also advocated. Na merong ladder ay sa program so that the industries will be able to ano. They know that they need to hire these um students. Guys, make sure they get the diploma, feel appropriate to their to their skills. Especially the man if kunyari dito, in Cristiano Ronaldo, in Manila, sino ba naman walang respeto sa UP Manila? And then in the SUCs, pioneer it in SUCs na known naman sa region na naman talaga nila. In that, huwag naman yung, well, syempre minsan mas innovative yung maliliit. Pero, I don't care kung maliit siya or malaki, pero may track record naman siya in, in, ano, in whatever area they're trying to push para madali mo namang ma-ado yan dun sa iba, di ba? Thank you, sir. Yes, Senator. And then, uh, second, we support the Senator's uh, suggestion on apprenticeship because we wanted an internship program with appropriate benefits. Kasi parang we can start with second year or third year, then that's not on the job training na sila sa hospitals, either private or uh, public. And then we give them a little bit allowance. Siguro kasi it's a work that they will also be doing. So both yeah. that there's an experience that will be developed. And can you can you give me numbers next time or just give to my staff? What is the economic cost to us of not doing this? Because that's the only way you can uh, tell people that we need to pull out funding for this type of programs, right? That's what I want. So, the economic cost? What is it? Shorter lives, diba? Yung, uh, short, yung they, they will uh, pull out of the uh, job market earlier because magkakasakit. We want to see that. See, si Dr. Tony Dance, yung group niya na um, Action for Economic Reform, they always put the numbers for visa in tax. So, you can contact them if you want them to help also. Sige pa, Senator. We will get in touch with them so we can work together on the, on the numbers. And then third, uh, of course, what was said by the other um resource persons on improving the conditions and job satisfaction. So finally, giving them a career path in this uh, in this industry para hindi talaga sila aalis. Kasi alam na they have a future uh, in our industry. Like uh, from nursing aid, they can be a nurse and then go up the ladder if it's still they want to pursue um, a higher education and become a doctor for instance. And then scholarships are provided. Fourth is the increased use of technology, telemedicine, innovation, because um, it will lessen the burden of the uh, of the uh, HRH, but especially the nurses. The other kinds already using robotics. Yung minsan po center yung pagbuhat ng patient. That's malaking anin eh, malaking um, tulong sa ating mga nurses. Kasi um, according to some nurses that be, that that uh, nagbibigay ng anecdote is that kung mas madali naman yung trabaho and you have a uh, smaller compensation, they still choose. Uh, yung ano yung hindi naman yung higher uh, higher pay because mas less naman yung uh, import for them so it's it it would be good to uh, pursue new technologies and uh, innovations in terms of our industry and then fifth improve of course increase funding for education training programs we support the reskilling and retooling of the especially of the current um, nurses pag lana if there is a new technology and new innovation that yes. we will be introducing and then uh, we need to really build planning capacity to develop. In terms of ano, um, new technologies, I think the DOH, well, actually, it's not the H-Plan technology assessment. Na, ano ba yung technology na essential na ma-introduce for cost saving and life saving? Kasi marami naman technology for convenience lang, which is great if you can afford it, di ba? So, iba job nga talaga ni HSAC yan to help us determine. Kasi this is the second or the third time in the hearing na pinabanggit yan, di ba? Na, na investments in, in new technologies. Pero ano, that's crucial. Diyan tayo magtatalo and job talaga ni HSAC yun. So, Balik tayo dyan sa, let's already use the resources that we already have in place and by law, uh, universal health care, job yan ni HTAC. Yes, Senator. And then, uh, building capacities to develop or improve HRH policies and strategies, strengthen data mechanisms. Siguro po, uh, it's important to have uh, forecasting and futures 
makita po yung ating ano, committee futures thinking because for instance um uh, some years back nag anti moratorium tayo on uh, pag ano mga nursing yeah. na courses but, I, but that was also if sorry if i may ano ah, dr bilabel di ba tama naman na ang ang short explanation ko for that is number one the hiring at that time, I, I think, baka up to now, per, per region, is cyclical, right? So, <coughs> excuse me, magbabans sila ng hiring sa US na yun, tapos mamaya, in 5, 10 years, open na naman. That's one. So, yung mag enroll pa lang ngayon, di niya alam na by the time na mag-graduate ka, wala na, wala na nag-hire sa kanila. And then number two, um, there really were naman an influx of... Uh, of uh, schools na substandard talaga. So, for me, I, I'm just very careful when I say tigil na yung ban ganito because there's always reasons, diba? but always regulated. I think that's a better term diba? to to regulate and be very, um, to be to be um, in touch with the changing circumstances so that yung regulation is proper. Yes po, Senator. And uh, that, yeah, let's improve our ano po, yung data. Uh, capacities natin. So we can be, we will be able to do uh, forecast and futures thinking in terms of uh, the needs of yeah. uh, of uh, the industry. Thank okay. you, po, Senator. That's all Thank for you me. very much. Thank you. Um, so let's move on. No? So Dole, si Ms. Jean Orsolino from the Department Legislative, Li Department Leg Legislative License Specialist. Good afternoon, Madam Senator, Madam Chair. Good afternoon yes. to my colleagues in the government and uh, all the guests. Uh, on behalf of the Dolly team present online, um, I heard, ma'am. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yes, ma'am, uh, I will proceed. Uh, may I share the insights coming from uh, one of our bureaus and so far as recommendations on the uh, the Senate resolution uh, is, is concerned. One, uh, we would like to recommend the institutionalization of human resources for health network and its HRS master plan as shared by NEDA to harmonize policy directions and coordinate the actions of its members to ultimately uh, attain quality health care for Filipinos. Second, um, the improvement of remun remuneration of our HCWs or our healthcare workers through legislation or through the amendments of uh, RA 6727 or the Wage Rationalization Act. Um, however, it is our opinion that beyond the mandated benefits of the Labor Code of the Philippines, we would like to suggest that we consult our tripartite plus partners to arrive at a win-win solution. Any adjustment in the salaries of healthcare workers will also have an effect in the salaries of other actors in the healthcare industry, which will eventually result in an increased cost of healthcare services in the country. Uh, the provision for participation in collective bargaining or the full enjoyment of freedom of association, as well as their access to basic social protection. And last but not the least, the alignment of the provisions of the proposed law on the ratified ILO Convention Number 149 or the Nursing Personnel Convention. Uh, Madam Chair, if there are questions relating to wages, working conditions, and uh, law, uh, employment, I have my colleagues with me online. Thank you, Paul, Madam Chair. Sige, um, I am not sure, no, but I hope your colleagues and uh, your colleagues in Dole have been uh, monitoring our hearing. But I assured uh, everyone that our goal is to ensure uh, not just um, decent working conditions, but conditions where our health workers can thrive, not just for the nurses, but for the others. So, parang for me, given na yun eh, uh, I, I will always uh, listen to it because um, clearly we have not really achieved uh, those decent work conditions that we are aspiring for for them. Um, but in addition to that, we are also looking at the impact of uh, their departure, the, the wholesale departure and recruitment from other countries, uh, which is affecting us. Siyempre, it's a given na para maritain natin sila. Gusto natin talagang decent nga yung working conditions natin. So thank you for helping us um, ensure that and kindly remind your team that we appreciate that uh, they remain proactive and work with DOH on this. Kasi the more um, input we have, it's easier and better. Like, 
kumbaga kung makikita natin yung best practices na, you know, parang lahat naman eh, have limitations sa resources, pero sino ba yung mga hospital, sino ba yung mga LGU na may best practices? Gusto natin makita yun, di ba? Sino yung mga na-visit nyo na may mga, ano kayo, um, uh, nasa best practice list nyo and nasa worst practice list nyo. Uh, magandang makita yun, hindi para may pahiyain tayo, pero para talagang uh, makita natin kung bakit yung iba nagagawa, ano yung meron na nagagawa nila, at ano ba yung wala. Kasi at the end of the day, if you ask me, well, it's down to political will. Diba? Yung desire that importance to the health workers to recognize na without them, uh, hindi rin naman mabubuo yung delivery of health system natin. So maraming salamat, ma'am. and um, Yes, Madam Chair. Salamat po. Finally, uh, I just want to check if... Uh, my classmate, uh, Yusek Ed de Vega, has anything more to add? No, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, bueno, uh, gracias por vuestra dedicación y uh, todo el trabajo que usted está haciendo. Now, your dedication, all, we'd like to thank you because you showed some courage because the hard decisions, including banning on direct employment, we can't, we can't do that executive uh, department level. No? It's, uh, uh, one thing we want to show you now, I'm a DPA, whenever they say we want to network, or we want to get workers. That's not, we already had that paradigm shift, that um, that particular one, that we're not promoting uh, deployment. Yes. No? Uh, yes. In fact, I don't know because of the health uh, sector uh, uh, issues or concerns. So, in fact, right now, uh, we're, we were supposed to, well, the DMW uh, was hoping to sign as soon as possible something with the Austrians on the health sector, but we in the DFA pinareno muna namin because let's see muna uh, the concerns. You can raise it also with Secretary Opta when you talk to her now. Uh, they will eventually sign something uh, this year, but uh, there are more considerations uh, and, to and make. What I'd like to, I, what I hope this hearing uh, achieves is bringing to the highest level sa mga principals nyo, sa secretaries nyo na, because I wouldn't be aware of what kind of discussions you're having yeah. sa DFA. I also don't know what discussions you're having in DMW. But now you know that it matters to me, to us, to everybody present here, yung welfare ng Filipinos as far as their health is concerned, including, alam ko na, hindi ko na kailangan sabihin sa inyo, alagaan nyo yung mga nandun na. Pero yun nga, sabi mo nga, okay, it's a policy we are not promoting. O but beyond that, nasasama ba ito sa usapan? Nasa checklist ba yan pag umalis ang presidente natin na nasasabihan siya ng mga principal yun na, boss, ito po yung kumukuha ng lahat ng mga health workers natin. Tapos, uh, okay naman sila mag-sweldo, so okay naman yung health workers natin. Pero in the meantime, wala nang naiwan dun sa barangay ng ganito, sa munisipyo ng ganito, dahil kinuha na nila lahat. That has to be discussed. And one of the stories that I share is that when I was a uh, president of the Women's Bureau of the Interparliamentary Union, I chaired a two or three day session on migrant workers in the National Assembly of France. No, it, sila yung nag sa amin. And puro European uh, countries to. And so they were all... Um, explaining ko, kasi European countries naman yun eh. So, mayabang sila, kinikwento nila kung anong pag-aalaga nila ng mga uh, overseas workers natin, yung migrant workers. Proud sila na, kasi yung mga nag-attend doon, syempre, mga parliamentarians yan who are um, active na sa welfare ng ano. So, pag-aayabang nila, ito ginagawa namin. So, at the end, kasi nga ako yung nag-chair, I gave a little presentation. Sabi ko, thank you for taking care of them. In the meantime, ganito kami sa Pilipinas. Wala na kaming doktor dito, nurse na lang na naiwan. Yung mga pamilya nito, wala nang nanay dahil nandito na sa inyo lahat. Dahil lahat sila. Ah, tapos, I asked them, have you signed? Are you a signatory to the, I always forget the exact title, migration welfare, welfare, there's a, there's a, look it up na lang. I just recently gave a speech. The, the, okay ulit. The UN Convention on the Rights of Market Workers. Yun. And not sila. Ba? Kasi hindi talaga sila signatory. Di ba? Dami pa nalang sinabi. Pero their country doesn't even bother. They don't even know. And these were parliamentarians who are proudly fronting as the protectors of you, of, of, of uh, migrant workers' rights. And they didn't even know about it. Now, this is admittedly circa 2009, 2010. That was the time I was president. When I looked at the list, nadadagdaga naman, but mostly yung mga recipients ng ating migrant workers, hindi pa rin sila pumirma. 
So parang tayo-tayo lang ang pumipirma niyan. So parang they should always be included now. My brother, um, Alan, has been the Secretary of Foreign Affairs. And granted, you have a few minutes to talk to your co at pa tawag doon. Your, your counterpart, di ba? So pipiliin mo talaga kung ano yung three top mo. Also, guys, it's everybody's job here. Make sure it's on the top three of your principal. Di ba? Kasi kung ang iba, ang resources nila ginto or um, oil, ano ba resources natin? We always say tao, pero wala naman sa top three natin parati. Okay? So, yun. Anyway, I interrupted because you made a valid, very valid point um, and you have the floor again. Yes, so lastly, uh, we took a lot uh, uh, from our fellow uh, uh, panelists here. Uh, they're very impressive. Uh, they remind me of you. Uh, so, uh, and we're proud to be working together for our healthcare workers. So, uh, we will uh, adopt what uh, we learned today in our future engagements. Thank you. And, and that's what's important, Tamano. I, I do not profess to be an expert. Marami akong natututunan. Sana lahat tayo, natututo tayo sa isa't isa. Now, I had asked you, ASEC Alcantara, to intervene kanina. Yun na rin ba yung kabuuan ng mga recommendations mo o may itadagdag ka pa? Um, in addition to the six points, Madam Senator, I believe you also requested us to uh, submit a complete uh, set of the bilateral labor agreements that we entered into in as far as healthcare workers is okay. concerned. Okay. Uh, yun pong written na uh, six points ko plus the submission of the of additional PLAs that were recently uh, signed uh, is a submit po na. And See, that would but, be But what I want is to also find the best practices kasi in my hearings when I chaired the Committee on Health way back at wala pa mga staff na to. Uh, Nabanggit na yan eh, nung DOH no, na ano yung mga model countries. And I do recall, one of them was Poland. Si Poland daw yung nakakuha. Tama ba? Kami yung uh, tri triple win project, triple German. win project sa Germany pa. Oh, yun. Okay. So, in, in the next meeting, yan ay mga pag-usapan natin, di ba? Na, let's not reinvent the wheel. If, if, um, if uh, receiving countries... Um, that we receiving countries for let's say let's use nurses, but it's not just nurses, iba. Sabi nga sa akin ng ibang colleagues ko, extend ko na tong hearing na to beyond health. Sabi ko, okay, but I'd like to start because I like to start with health because we can easily replicate it naman with other. Ngayon nga medyo nagiging focus is nurse, but I also try to say na sa nale ah hindi lang naman nurses sa iba din naman, pati sa mga PT, occupational therapists, lahat yan kinukuha din naman sa aten. Um, but going back, is receiving countries. Kung sila na papirma na ng ibang bansa, edi, it makes it easier for us to say na we want the same or more because baka mamaya we're even giving more to them than yung nagpapirma, aggressive lang magpapirma yung iba. Yes po, Madam, uh, uh, yes po, Madam Chair. We will prepare the ben uh, benchmarks, uh, best practices. And then idagdag ko lang kasi just before Holy Week, my last official trip was with our Senate President and our colleagues to Japan. And I also recall na I think it was around 2015 or 2016, so that's a good six, seven, seven, eight years ago. I also went to Japan and also met the same way we did this time with members of parliament in Japan. So second time ko to have extensive meetings with them. And recognize nila, it's always on the agenda, the aging population of Japan. It's on the agenda. But, um, and then, di ba, time... Jepepa, how many, how many years, 20 years na yata si Jepepa, um, they open up to nurses, but the requirements are quite hard. We support in the sense na, again, freedom lang naman ng mga ano natin to choose. But on the other hand, we, ako, again, I'll go back to where I stand. You want to get our resources, which include our very valuable health workers. What do we get in, be in between? Kasi ang, fe ang feeling ko, ang feeling nila... Salamat kayo, binibigyan namin kayo ng trabaho. We should not negotiate that way. Ang negotiation namin is pasalamat kayo, kinakausap namin kayo, and may chance kayong kumuha ng health workers namin na napakagaling. Diba? So, yun. Okay. Anyway, my staff reminds me, may meeting ako with Chen. So, um, I will suspend because I'm not sure if the next is a hearing or a TWG, but definitely we will be in touch with all of you. I thank you for all your time, uh, for sharing your insights with us, and uh, I hope and I expect to see most of you again for the next steps. Thank you very much.
think about the chat in between. Thank <laughs> you. 